I feel butt plug gate is looming large in our blended family dynamic. It was a butt plug. Apparently. Much love. Oh my god, this gets worse. <laughs> Has anything like that ever happened to you? Well, I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas like is it bad taste to dress up as the king for coronation? For the coronation. And how do you explain... Do you want to just do that one again? No, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you fluffed it twice. Like, is it bad to... (laughs) Like, is it bad taste to dress up as the king for the coronation? And how do you explain the cheese rolling race to someone not from the UK? It's an everyday dilemma. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual agony ants, are we, William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North, radio and TV presenter, showgirl, fellow. Showgirl? Yes, because of, um, you know, you're dancing. Oh. Yeah. Icon. Icon. Thank you. I'm more Tiffany and Co. You're more Costco. And that's from René... (laughs) Zellweger. And that's from René Donati. Oh, okay. Hey, do you know what? I've not been Costco for years. No. You used to go with me, mate. You used to run run pub and you just get everything in bulk. It's just sort of round around trips to Selfridges now, isn't it? Mm. No. no. (laughs) Yeah, I get everything in bulk. (laughs) Uh, They did. They used to get it all in bulk. Did you? Yeah. From Costco? Yeah. What was the best thing to buy? I used to get like loads of Haribo sweets, even though I'm not really a big sweet fan. I had loads of them round flat for you, for ages. Right. And uh, what else did I get? You used to get all... Oh, we once went when we were having a big barbecue as well. Got all the stuff in there. Good. Mm. Lovely. I don't think I've ever been to a Costco. Maybe anyway, I should go. Yeah, we should. We should do a trip to... There's a great scene on... Modern Family, where they go to Costco. Do you not remember? Yes, yeah. yes, and Cam and Mitch get very excited. Right, shall we have a drink? We should have a drink. Do you want to do the gin? We're doing gin. Yes, I feel like I haven't sat across you in the studio for ages. I know for the listeners it's been a week, but um, <laughs> it's felt it's been about two weeks for us. Oh. Yeah. Right, who are we toasting to? I, I would like to toast to all the lovely people I met in Edinburgh. I was up there to visit my friend Ashley. More on this in a minute. How many friends have you got? I can't keep up. I'm sorry. As I get now into my 30s, I've got about four friends and two of them are in this room. (laughs) Seriously. I don't see anyone these days. Anyway, we had lots of g and come up and say hello, whether that was on the streets of Edinburgh, in bars, in... I say in bars. (laughs) <laughs> Two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, and uh, or at the airport. So to everyone in Edinburgh that came to say hi, this is to you. Cheers. Mm. Oh, lovely. Oh, nice strong drink. It's what they would want in Edinburgh. No more Glasgow, I think. That was it. As a, as always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextedmyboss dot com, or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextedmyboss, or you can write to this handsome devil sat across me, William Hanson, who promises a handwritten reply. So he's sitting across me. On his own letter to paper. Not stick across you. The address is on the website, <laughs> sexedmyboss.com. Let's talk about, before I ask you about your week, the run-up to the coronation. Yes, are you excited? I am, and I'm massively into quiche because of it. Okay. <laughs> at the moment. So, um, they've, do, they've done a coronation quiche, haven't they? Well, they've released a recipe for a coronation quiche. So, last week, I had a friend come over who's... One, um, of, one of your four friends. Yeah, well, she, she a friend come over to the house, and... Um, She's a doctor. She works for the NHS. Oh, she's okay. an anaesthetist, so I thought, right. I'll she's be... an anaesthetist. Yeah. Oh, you don't put that any of that in the quiche. No. And um, I thought I'll get a, I'll get a quiche and some asparagus in, be a bit fancy. But anyway, we didn't have any uh, quiche or of the asparagus because we just ended up going pub. Right. Okay. So um, did you make this quiche? No, no, no. no. I bought it from Sainsbury's well, for an offer because loads of them. So I had it, right? And do you know what? I've not had quiche for. For years, and I forgot how good it is. Mm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a coronation one for that. I think you have to make it. I don't think you can buy it. Yeah, you can. You can apparently you can make crustless quiche, but quiche is like because when you see it on a buffet, it looks a bit a bit. Is this a crustless, crustless quiche a frittata? I don't know. I don't know yeah. what you've just said to me. To be honest, <laughs> I don't know what. You've, but, um, Do you not know what a frittata is? No, what is it? An you egg? don't know what a frittata? Yes, it's an eggy thing. Is it just a? Is it it's, just... it's like a baked omelette. Do you know what they call omelette in Burnley? <laughs> I only realised this when I left Burnley and went to 
You knew. What? Egg round pan. <laughs> egg round pan. So I remember saying to someone at uni, I was like, oh, do you want some egg round pan? They were like, what? I'm like, egg round pan. And they were like, what's egg round pan? I went, well, it's egg round the pan. He went, an omelette. I went, oh, yeah, if you want to be posh. <laughs> <laughs> egg round pan. So my grandma used to make it. She went, do you want me to make you an egg round pan? And, Love, and what did she put in the egg round pan? Just cheese and ham. Cheese and ham. Anyway, yep. so um, that's why I'm looking forward to the coronation, because quiche is in, and I'm really into quiche at the moment. Well, it's lovely. A lovely, fantastic ancient ceremony reduced to a quiche. Uh, but I'm glad that you're having a nice time with it. Are you uh, coining it in, in the run-up to the... Sorry, are you busy in the run-up to the <laughs> coronation? Very busy. Being the UK's leading etiquette expert. Yes. Mm. Yes. No, we're, we're enjoying it. I'm very excited for the coronation. We obviously, none of us have lived through one before. Unless we've got some very elderly Gene Devers listening to this. Was your dad alive for the... No, he was not. A... Oh, actually. Yes, he was alive. But he was two. Oh, okay. So he can't really remember it. Oh. Um, but yes, no, it's, it's very exciting. However, less exciting news... And this was brought to, it was on Twitter, and my friend Stephen sent me this. Um, but have you seen, you probably have, but haven't realised, the Marks and Spencers faux pas? Yeah, I, so what's going on here? Because I was, you know I love a Colin Caterpillar, and they've done a King and Queen one, haven't they? Oh, have they? Yeah. <laughs> right. What, is it the Caterpillar case? No, no, I didn't know about that, but I'll, I'll go and sample it. Um, but their logo for the coronation, that they've stuck on biscuit tins and on any sort mm. of coronation, probably on that Colin Caterpillar, Charles and Camilla thing the crown in the middle is the crown of a marquis or a coronet of a marquis which is a rank of the aristocracy they have demoted the king they've put the completely the wrong crown on oh so what <laughs> put, like MS is like when i think of britain MS has been the top 10 things i think of so what it's only a bloody it's not even a proper crown fair enough if they give Charles the wrong crown on the day. Like yeah. this bit of cock up, but, we'll make but on a biscuit tin, does it really matter? Well, I think so, as one of Britain's leading retailers. I think it would be nice to get these little details right. Well, I'm sticking up for MS. 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 I really am. But I'm sticking up for MS. It's e e easily done. It's not easily done mistaking the St. Edward's crown for a cor coronet of a Marquis. It's a bloody picture. It's a, an image. And to be fair, actually, on the same day that this was all kicking off and um, Stephen and I were having a message about, you know, broken Britain, etc. <laughs> ben, <laughs> ben sends me a, <laughs> a picture going, <laughs> I'm going to put this on Instagram to ask for Jude Diva's questions. And he gets the bloody wrong coronet in the middle as well. Oh, so I had to go back oh. with that's not the St. Edward's crown. What can we expect on the day, In then? the interest of balance, by the way, Fry's, as in the chocolate company, they've also got one wrong as well. Oh, Just FYI. What can we expect FYI on, Fry. The, on the day? Don't, <laughs> how long will the ceremony be? Well, we don't, we don't know that. At time of recording, um, I would imagine probably over the bank holiday weekend we're about to come into, um, because this is on the Friday, a lot of information might be released. But they are yet to announce that. They've announced who's carrying various things. Your name wasn't on the list, but I did... Did give it a read. I'd love to have got an invite purely just to annoy you. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, it's it's good. It's, I'm excited just to see what it's going to be like. Is it like a wedding? Will it be like a big piss up? No. Surely they'll have a drink. I'm not being well, funny. Well, yeah, but, but I don't think on the during the ceremony. I'm not being funny, but if you've been crowned king. Yeah. You'd be like, you'd have a few beers. I'm, sh you? I'm sure he will celebrate after it's all done. But, you know, there's a, there's a whole programme of activity across the long weekend. Mad to think that the King of uh, England and the Commonwealth and the UK is a Burnley fan. <laughs> he is. We've talked about this before. It's back to broken Britain. He's, he's, he's an yes, actual I know, Burnley fan. Yes, so, I know, I um, know. For Gene Devers that have come new to, new to so this So when fact. he was Prince of Wales, um, bless him, King Charles, about... 10, Sorry, minutes. I'm going to stop you there. This is one of my pet hates. It's just the king. The king. Okay. Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, she is now. All right. But at the time, she was the queen. So when he was Prince of Wales, the king uh, did you. a lot of work for the Prince's Trust in Burnley um, for a lot of young people. Mm. And, he, and he really came up to visit Burnley and then he got very fond of it and realised that there was a lot of like poverty and um, underprivileged kids and stuff you know, he's very area. fond of that so he, he he came to burnley a lot for the princess trust and he, he became really fond of the town and the area and he once got asked in an interview what football team do you support and he said not really into football but if i had to choose it, it'd be burnley because i've been to the ground and they've been very hospitable 
constantly and stuff. So Google it. He's, he's actually, yeah, no, he's exactly. we did verify that. Charlie's a claret. So His Majesty. Um, yeah, and there was actually another coronation at Burnley the other day as well. Oh, really? Yeah, this, this is amazing. We won the league. We won the league at the Blackburn league. Rovers. <laughs> we won the championship at Blackburn Rovers. Oh, we is this because you've gone up? Yeah, but we won the league. We will be singing and talking about this for years to come. Will you until you go down again? And <gasps> oh, all right, get you. Well, it, I mean, it's, it's been happen. an amazing week for me. Has and it? I'm, yeah, I can't believe. I cannot believe we won the league at Ewood Park. Like that is so, like. Uh, yeah, I can't believe it. Um, well, congratulations. Thank what a, you. It really puts the next correlation in perspective. Um, you were talking about you were talking about broken Britain. Yes. Before, and usually when you say stuff like that, I do a big eye roll. I think it's not actually broken, is it? But I, 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 I. Oh, here we go. Hashtag politics. I think that it possibly could be because okay. have you noticed right the rising dog shit on the streets at the moment. Okay. Have you? Have you? Right. Okay. So, in the nineties, can't say I have. But. In the in the nineties, right, on my estate and where I grew up, hmm. there's dog shit everywhere. It was like part of life, right? You'd always okay. tread dog shit in house. Your mum would get mad, and then they started like a campaign. I don't know who it was. Maybe the Labour government at the time started putting signs up saying, you know, you'd play footy and you'd guarantee someone had sliding dog shit. You'd slide in dog shit all up your leg. Oh. Go all up your leg and all up your body. Oh, oh. It would. You'd play up field and then... Okay, I get the idea. You start to crack down on it. You start to crack down on it, put signs up saying £2,000 fine or I remember the one saying dog poo can blind children and people thought, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to blind a kid with a dog poo. So then people started picking up after the dogs and you'd like, you'd put an old coat on you always had poo bags, yeah. nappy bags in there. Fair enough. I've noticed over the past year or so there's dog shit everywhere. You walk out my house now, dog shit in middle of the road. Sorry to keep swearing. Right? Twice in three weeks, I've trodden in dog shit. I don't know if it's just in London. I don't know if it's anywhere. But the, the, the rise of dog shit is, is happening in the UK at the moment. Well, let us know, Gene Divas, right in. And if any other Gene Divas notice, please get in touch. I blame the government. I do. I know <laughs> we don't get political, but, you know... Surely it's got, a council issue. We've got... Bloody inflation, cost of living, and dog shit everywhere. <laughs> well, if only they could sort out one of those, we'd all be okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's my rant over with. Okay, wow. Have you never stood in dog poo? Well, I'm sure it's happened, but now I, I normally... But is it because you're always on your phone walking and you don't see what's... No, no okay. I was on a run the other week and my new running trainers trotted oh, it in. Tr- right. And you have to rub it on bloody grass. It stinks as well. well it's, yeah, it's not pleasant. You well, noticed I'll... it as well, Ben? Yeah. Um, in parks is, is any of it Diego's no obviously not no thank you Diego did have an incident at the park did he eat it yeah oh, it's this, why did he eat each other it was horrible oh god and I'm never kissing him again <laughs> no oh you little shit why did you tell this one there <laughs> oh what you like I, I thought it was I thought it was something else honestly boys and I did and I'm, a, I'm ashamed <laughs> I am I'm ashamed why have you told him that what you like? I thought it was something else, William. I did. And then what? I was eating it and it was shit. I'm so sorry. I've had shit breath for a month. Should we move on from this conversation? <laughs> anyway, how's your week been? It's been lovely. I went up to see my friend Ashley from school. He, uh, We've spoken about Ashley before. We used to recreate the Bible with Beanie Babies when we were at school because we had lots of friends. And uh, he uh, has moved to Edinburgh, so I went to go and visit him uh, for a couple of days, which You're was very a committed nice. friend. Thank you. I try. Go on, it's Edinburgh to see a friend, fair play. Yeah. You're a lovely boy. Thank you. And and we had a great time just exploring the city. And I have I was potato peeled three times. <laughs> Were you actually? Yeah. <laughs> no. Ashley was with me for two of those occasions and he was very amused slash bemused uh, at... What's the difference? Uh, amused is... Ha ha ha, bemused is... Ha ha. Okay, think. that helps. Um, <laughs> that clears that one up. Um, we're not bringing back wacky word. Uh, and um, anyway, so we, uh, yeah, we were walking across the street, actually very near the voodoo rooms where we did uh, a tour back in the day, just before COVID. Oh, yeah. Near there, near the Ivy in St. Andrew's Square. And, um, and yeah, this lady, I, I didn't get her name, so hello, you're wearing a lovely white coat. And, uh, and she just shouted out as we were crossing, Wendy! 
And I sort of them. went into, oh, right, uh, <laughs> can I borrow your potato peeler? Did you actually do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And then we were uh, coming down from the Johnny Walker 18, whatever it's called, bar, which is a rooftop bar. We actually didn't top, have a drop to drink, but we were we had a very nice meal. And, uh, and we came down. And, uh, and, yeah, one of the staff went, Wendy! And I had, literally, I was leaving the building and I had to shout behind me. I couldn't even see her. Can I borrow your potato peeler? <laughs> um, and actually another one of the members of the staff there, Iona, came to say hello as well. She's a and diva. Really? Jamie came to say hello. I got potato peelers in the airport as well. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was big. That's Clearly, a... Edinburgh, we need to go back up and do a tour. I didn't realise that we were so popular. That's amazing. That's really good. So it was very nice. Had some lovely, lovely food mm-hmm. as well in Edinburgh. It's very good for food, uh, including it, probably the most delicious apple tart tatin I have ever had in my life. Delicious. Although I realised on a Scottish menu it should be actually, they're missing a trick, and it should be called an apple tart tartan. No? <laughs> okay, that, I'll be honest, that was Ashley's joke. I've stolen it, so if you don't like it, letters to Ashley. So, no, it was lovely. Edinburgh was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and uh, we toured the Palace of Holyrood House, which is... What's the Palace of Holyrood House? The, where the Scottish government are. Uh, uh, well, to be fair, I'd give you half a point. Holyrood, which is directly opposite, is the Scottish Parliament. Mm. But it is named after the Palace of Holyrood House, which is the other side of the road, which is the King's official residence in Scotland. I thought they go to Balmoral. That's a private residence. The official residence that oh. the public own is the Palace of Holyrood House. Did they ever go there? Yes, they go for Holyrood Week in July. Oh. And other times of the year. Will they go to Balmoral in the summer? Well, we don't know. Maybe. Yeah. The Queen loved it there, didn't she? Did, she did, but it's new, new monarch, new... It's one thing we don't know. But what, I, what Ashley and I did particularly like on the audio tour of the Palace of Holyrood House is that you have the, uh, as he's known in Scotland, the Earl of Forfar, but the Duke of Edinburgh, Edward, uh, and the Princess Royal, talking about, you know... How Edward? Is he Duke of Edinburgh now? He is now Duke oh, of Edinburgh, yeah. Um, talking oh, about uh, the palace. And they're like, it's, it's just... What it's so nice is it's just a it's just a regular, intimate, private house. Well, it's not a private house. But they're just... It's just it's just like, you know, it's just like your house. It's just small and cosy, and you're walking, you're walking through, you know, the Queen's reception room the antechamber. It's this huge palace, but to them it's just a small intimate yeah. house. Oh, really? Yeah. Edward's there and his slippers put it measured into them. <laughs> Quite. Um, anyway, so that was nice. Uh, it was It was good. Okay. It was nice. I did a lot of walking. The 35,000 steps. Wow, it's hours. very hilly Edinburgh as well. Yes. We've been a few times. It's a we great have. city. It I is a great went city. Went on a stag do there. Oh, did you? Was it not top ten? It's a good stag do. Yeah, Pilks's yeah. stag do. Pilks's. Mm. Why did they choose Edinburgh? Because they had to bring the wedding forward, and then the stag do was meant to be away, so we cancelled that. Right. Just did a weekend. Just picked Edinburgh. Yeah, I see. Um, I have a new entry into Pillock of the Week. Oh, okay. Which is this? Uh, this do we other. have a jingle for that? No, not yet. I'm sure it'll come. And uh, so, actually, this is this is not particularly um, funny, but I was walking. <laughs> So, listen carefully. I was walking back from the gym, and I went behind. As I sort of walked past behind a bus stop on the road, the other side, um, a white Porsche, sadly, and a um, motorbike collided. Everyone's fine. Did you shout? You can't park that there. <laughs> I can't wait to see a non-fatal crash. Well, that was a crash. You know, when you see crash. them on TikTok and like cars upside down on someone's front lawn. <laughs> Some builder whites window down and goes, Hey mate, you can't park that there. I can't wait to do that. Obviously, but it's not a non fatal one. Anyway, everyone was fine, um, but we didn't know at first whether everyone was fine. Lots of people rush over. I was standing next to a lady with a pram whose husband had run over, and I said, I'm going to phone 999. She said, Yes, good idea. So I'm phoning 999 and I'm reporting it because we don't know. The the motorbike had fallen on top of the motorcyclist. So at this point, we didn't actually, everyone was literally, everyone was fine. Um, shaken, but fine. So I'm reporting it to the woman on 999, and I'm saying, you know, oh, bus, we're by bus stop W, blah, blah, whatever it was. And um, and I finish like, giving all my details, and she goes, ah, oh, thanks for that. No one has actually reported it to us just yet, uh, so we won't take any action. I said, no, no, I'm reporting it to you. I, d- yeah, but was it an emergency or just a bump? Well, it was quite serious. Oh, okay. I'd, at least a police car needed to come. It stopped the stop the traffic, so something needed to happen. But sorry, 
when have 999 become... When have 999 become like the BBC, where they need two sources in order to actually run anything? Countries or do anything? going to rack and ruin, dog shit everywhere, yes. people crashing into each other. No one's, I'm so sorry, um, but there's been a bomb, <laughs> it's exploded, or well, no one's reported to us just yet. I'm... Mm. Which reminds me, I've really got into Drive to Survive at the moment. Drive to Survive? Oh, God. Have you watched it? Oh. What's Drive to Survive? Everybody's been harping on about it for years, and I finally gave in and watched it on Netflix last week. Okay. I've already... Is it, is it reality? Is it? It's about Formula One. Oh, right. Oh, no, it's me. good. Oh, it's good. And I would never into racing. I used to think you'd pay 200 quid for a ticket to go and watch Formula One. You'd sit there and it'd be like, vroom! Yeah. That was it. I went to watch the Silverstone Grand Prix once. It was the worst day of my life. Did you? Yeah. Who did you go there with? Family. Did you? Yeah. Oh. And would you, you just say, it is, I mean, I say it's better on, <laughs> yeah, it's better on television in that you yeah, can go and make a cup that. of tea. Mm. It's still horrific, but at least you watch watch every car. You are paying an awful lot of money to sit in a stand for all these cars to go past for three seconds. It's fantastic. How do they go past? <laughs> Thank you. There you go. How's your week been? Yeah, good. Into that, drive to survive. Uh, at the time of recording, I'm heading up to Blackpool today. Oh, what are you doing in Blackpool? I'm doing a Young Farmers DJ gig. Young Farmers DJ gig. In Revolution, or okay. Rebs. So it's a lot of the words that will be playing. I've got a brand new combiner harvester and I'll give you the key. I boom, should boom, download boom. that. They'd love that, the Young Farmers. Yeah, I'm sure they've never heard so, it before. the Young Farmers, <laughs> like, kind of started, I think it was, like, in the 30s, 50s okay. and it was the idea was young farmers because they all live out in the country get together and it's generally where you find farmers and they all come together and meet and i think it was like to help them get wives and stuff and now they've, they're still going and now it's just a big piss up so. to help them get wives yeah like back in the day right <laughs> do they not want husbands no it's just a, a big piss up so i'm djing there i've got my DJ outfit on. Are you going? Are you going there yeah. straight from this? Swap my DJ outfit. Okay. Oversized T-shirt, black. Yes, jacket. it's a nice oversized T-shirt. Mm. And um, are you are you saving up for an iron? But what songs are you going to play? Will that be telling? Well, yeah, but this is going out on Tuesday. You'll have done the gig. What are you going to play? It might start. I usually I either start. I'll probably start with Arctic Monkeys, Brian Storm. Brian Storm, isn't yeah. it Brain Storm? No, it's called Brain Storm, trust okay. me. Oh, is it? Yeah. It so really is called Brian Storm. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Is that a whopper or a banger? It's a banger. So you, is, bang, is banger above whopper? No, whopper's above banger. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I've got banger, whopper, and then whip it up. W whip it up? Yeah, when you want to get it whipped up. <laughs> <laughs> 33 years old. Is that where the dressing gown belt comes out? <laughs> no, that's where I'm like, right, I'm going to get everyone to lose their shit. And what, okay, tell me. But, um, what's that, what is that song? Uh, don't give away, my magician doesn't give away his secrets. Right, I've been okay. in the magic DJ circle, so I can't give it away. The magic DJ circle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know there's a few songs that are banned from certain gigs? Really? At race courses, um... Oh, what is it you're not allowed to play? You can't play I Predict a Riot. A lot of them ban that because it kicks off and then people start headbutting each other and that. I, should, I love gigs, so I need to do more of them. Apparently you can't play Little Nas X, Old Town Road as well. Little Nas X? Do you know who Little Nas X? Oh, God, you're, it literally, you're so old. You're so old. I'm going to take my horse to the Old Town Road. Yeah. Who, but who the heck is called Little Nas? He's, he's probably a, called like Steve or something. Is nah, his actual li, name? It's Little Nas X. Little Nas. Little X. Nas X. Anyway. He's part of the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, I don't part care. Of the, the LGBTQ plus community. Well, who isn't these days? So, um, yeah. So that's me. I want you to come to a gig one day. <laughs> we were supposed to go to. You were meant to come tonight, weren't you? Yeah, you just didn't invite me. Yeah, I've got I'm going Bradley to... and Sam Andy coming to meet me. Oh, of course they are. They're coming to meet yeah. me. Yeah, okay, nice. Um, I'll wait for you to finish stretching. You're going to Blackpool, I'm going to the Cadogan Hall. Oh, are you? Yes. What are you going to watch? I'm going to watch my friend Gary. Oh, is that a film, my friend Gary? <laughs> um, is that a theatre production? <laughs> oh, is it near? Is it on the King's Road? It's Sloane Square. Yeah. Near Peter Jones, John Lewis sort of area. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's a very, very fancy part of London. It is a very fancy part of London. And my friend Gary, he's over from LA and he's doing a, like a one-man show. So oh, I'm doing it there. a one-man show? Yeah. 
Okay. The dream. I'm, uh, is that what it's called? <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I've just reminded me. <laughs> just, ben, ben got that. So. The one man show, The Dream. Is it called The Dream? No. I, don't, I do not get that at all. What? It was a joke at your expense. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Pearls before swine. You're nothing without me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna watch Oklahoma tomorrow. Are you? Yeah. Lovely. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's now, a. Br- I was in this in year eight. Yes. Jordan did it as a school production, and his line was, "Gee, Annie, I'm so hungry, I could eat a gate post." And I don't know if they actually say that in this production. Well, they did it in the the, the like the film theatre production that uh, Hugh. What's he called? Jackman. That Hugh Jackman was in. Yeah. So, uh... Okay. I'm, uh, hoping that if that line's in there, I'll be like... They could put you in it when ticket sales start to drop. And they need to, like, you know... Stunt. Gee, Annie, I'm so hungry I could read a gate post. What is called stunt casting, which would be similar for you, but slightly different phraseology. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> right, come on, let's, uh... Oh, we do, oh, it's a joke of the week. It's a joke of the week. It's a joke of the week. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat with our Jordan. And if a giggle is what you see, you're sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Cha cha cha. Well, where's the cha cha cha, Ben? I don't give a crap about the cha cha cha. Insomnia is terrible, but on the plus side, only three more sleep till Christmas. <laughs> I've got another one for you. That's clever. I've got a really that is good, clever. Good one. A colourblind friend said to me that all apples are yellow. I told him that was bananas. <laughs> and then I got sent one from a Gene Diva. Right. Thank you for sending those in. Um, this was from. Oh, sorry, I've not saved your name, but it's from. A, Hi from New Zealand, Jordan. My colleague told me a joke at work today, and I thought it was a goer for Jordan's joke of the week. Why do you never see a pregnant Barbie doll? Gosh, I don't know. Because because Ken came in a different box. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go to listen to this question? The Barbie film is out this July. Now, we'll go for the weekly plug. Uh, don't you just hate it when you're listening to your favourite podcast and you get rudely interrupted by adverts? Well, there is a way to avoid this disruption. You can sign up to Sexted Extra. It's just £3 a month and you could have undisturbed Sexted. To sign up, where'd you go? sexandmyboss.com forward slash extra. Let's get on to the listeners' problems. This first one is from CX. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I'm fast approaching my late 20s and I've never been in a relationship or even had so much as a fling. Uh, This isn't through choice per se. There have been a few special guys over the years I've fallen for, but circumstances meant I couldn't pursue them. Cupid seems to have it in for me. I've been online dating for a good five years now, and though almost all of the dates are nice, I can't seem to find that fabled spark, even after four or five dates. Several friends and colleagues have recently told me that they weren't interested in their partners at first. That's nice. And that feelings (laughs) developed much later on once they committed to entering into a relationship. So my question is this. How many dates should you go on in the hope of finding those special butterflies? And when should you call it quits with the person you're dating if they don't appear? I always worry about leading people on, but frankly, my singleness is getting embarrassing and I'm not quite ready to give myself up to becoming the old maid. I feel I'm destined to be just yet. I'd love your advice. Kindest regards, C. C, when you know, you know. So there's no point in, in dragging it out and thinking this might go somewhere. When you know, you know, and if, if you match with someone on a dating app or, or you meet with someone, you'll just, it's so hard to describe, but you'll just know and you'll just mm. want to see them all the time. You'll like, you'll be like, I know this sounds bad, but you might be meeting a friend on a Wednesday. They might only be free on a Wednesday, so you'll cancel on your friend. You'll just want to see them all the time. Yeah, but I would, look, I wouldn't worry, see, that you are, um, you are still single. I think life is, you know, our parents, for example, I don't know, your parents were very young when they got married, so my mother was incredibly young. So How I old was your mum? 22? My mum was 18. 18. Okay, there we go. But still young compared to I our I can gen. remember the day to this day, darling. Okay, it I thought we were not having Fabulous, one. darling. There was champagne all around. And um, we may have had a good evening as well. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? 
Wow. Um, so yeah, I would. I wouldn't worry. I. I would relax a bit. Maybe you're putting pressure on yourself, and that is just putting too much pressure on the dates. And actually, when you sort of, they always say when you're not looking for it is when you find it. Yeah. You know, is when it happens. Don't worry about it, honestly. And if it's not quite right, don't lead them on. No. Um, but don't, and your friends will not be judging you. And I'm sure you've got other single friends as well. Um, how long were your mum and dad married for before they had you? Two and a half years. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. How old were they when they had you? Uh, older, 24, 25. That's not that My mum was, yeah. yeah. No. So, yes. And yours? Uh, well, you were second, weren't you? I think mum was 20, 21. Gosh. Mad to think that. Yeah. But she's still quite young now. Mm. Yeah. How she old was your mum and dad? I think closer to 30. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe over 30. Oh. Oh. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, so don't don't worry. Uh, it's uh, don't put any pressure on yourself. It'll because I think if you put pressure on yourself, that'll transfer to the dates, and maybe that's why you're going into a date thinking this is going to be who I'm going to marry. Mm. And actually, that's not how it works. And actually, the only piece of obviously I've only ever been in a relationship with Mikey, and that has ended quite nicely um, in that that we are married. But um, but in Downton, this is my only piece of relatable advice. Uh, Lord and Lady Grantham, one of the plot lines is actually when they got married, they didn't really love each other and it was a bit of an arranged marriage and it was forced. But actually then they discovered that they actually did love each other and they found a connection. So actually, you know, it has happened, even though that is made up. Spoiler! Oh, it's not a big spoiler. I mean, it's also been out for like <laughs> 12 years, Ben. Next one. This is from Marnie. Dear William Jordan and EPB, as an avid Radio 1 listener... I have followed Jordan on Instagram for some time, but was suggested to check out William's profile, and from there I found producer Ben's. I was intrigued to see what Ben looked like, as from the TikTok clips we do not see his face. While scrolling through, now a year or so deep, I accidentally double-tapped and liked a very old photo. I quickly unliked and swiftly exited the app, embarrassed by the whole situation. My question is, what is the etiquette when getting caught out stalking by like an... uh, what is the etiquette when getting caught out stalking by liking an old photo on an account you do not follow? Thank you in advance, Marnie. I, I think, uh, yeah, you just got to un- unfollow it, but there's always ones... Or in the case of Ben, block. Yeah, but there's ones where people go through all your old ones and like just like all your old pictures and all your new ones, and that's a bit... I, yes, I think if you follow an account, let's say I followed the ABC account today... You follow. It's okay to like posts going forward. Is it? Is it not okay to like posts? I wouldn't retrospectively old. like because that does look a bit weird. By mm. all means, look at them, but you don't really need to like them. Yeah, and we all do it. Don't worry about it, Marty. But and yeah. also remember, liking them in terms of the double tap, you can like something without double tapping something. Okay. You can like it, like oh, how pleasing. <laughs> but you don't need to double tap. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that is good advice, actually. But, yeah, if you like it, and it's from, like, 2016, quickly unlike it. Will that show up? It depends how many followers you have. Ben, show for up Ben, on... it would have done. Yeah, I know, but will that show up on your, <laughs> on your notifications? Possibly. I don't, I don't quite know how the algorithm works. OK. This is from Anonymous. Hi, guys. I've been a long-time listener and always wanted to write in, but I've never had a story wor- worthy enough. But now I need some advice. Oh, we'll have any old crap on. Don't worry about that. I recently started hooking up with someone new. I booty called him one evening and headed over after a few drinks. As you can imagine, there wasn't much chat and we got straight to it. Then mid-flow, there was a loud crack and one of the bed legs broke. Oh, go on, get in. We had a giggle about it, but carried on. After the deed, we realised that the bed was more broken than we imagined as the middle support collapsed, resulting in the wooden slats moving and the mattress falling partially through the bed frame. He tried fixing it with no luck. At this point, it was around 2am and I'd gotten what I came for, so I decided I would... So I decided that I would leave so I could sleep in my own perfectly stable bed at home. I ordered an Uber and told him I was off. He looked a bit put out, so I was wondering what the correct etiquette is when you break someone's bed. Should I have stayed over, offered to help fix it, or invited him back to mine? Thank you in advance. Anonymous. I mean, it... Over to you. Why over to me? (laughs) Because this is statistically more likely to have happened to you. That is really unfair and a bit out of order. I... No, I don't mean that, but, you know. 
what the hell are you doing there? Um, it's a tough one because I can imagine if you, you, you've had a booty call or a one night stand, you kind of just want to get out there after the said deed is done. Mm. But I kind of think it is, unless you, yeah, so that person, he's made it really clear that he didn't want you to leave. So I'd, I'd kind of wait it out and just wait till the morning, have a brew and then leave. But if, if it's yeah, like... Then you're also, you're sleeping on a very uncomfortable bed. Yeah, I know. And we've all been there where you just want to get back and stuff. I would... Even, like, staying at a friend's house, you think, I don't want to... Stay. And they go, stay over tonight. Oh, I just want to get to my own bed. But mm. what I think you've kind of done the wrong thing there. If they wanted you to stay, then you probably should have stayed and stayed it out. But if, you you know, you do have one night stand and a hookup, and they're like, right, I'm going to go to sleep now. You need to go. You'd be like, right, fine. I would offer to pay for any bed repair. I... Because you were both culpable. I mean, fair play. It takes two to tango. Sounds like they were proper at it. Yes. Mega shagging. Mega shagging to break a bed. And... Uh, never broken a bed? No. no. Uh, well, yes, but not like that. Um, Mikey jumped on it, didn't he? I alighted the bed in the wrong way. And and it, this, I talked about this a few weeks ago and it, it broke the bottom of the bed that's why we ended up with your bed yeah basically william's got the same bed as me now as well yeah and the same color bedroom so uh great minds we've got very similar taste clearly and uh yeah i i would i would just fold up is it a divan one whatever they call it an ottoman bed yes it is yours isn't you went for the cheap one piss off piss right off i had it before you did you? Yeah. I've got the receipts. I had, I had that bed before you. Anyway. All right. Can't do so sensitive. Not that bothered. <laughs> Clearly. Next letter. Going back to Anonymous's letter, just to finish that. Offer, I would say to your friend, uh, that they do not accept your offer. Mm. But it, it's a bit like spilling wine on a carpet. You offer. Yeah. Because if that was your bed, you're going to have to be paying for it. And maybe if you are going to hook up with this person again, you invite... Well, you probably have to invite them over to yours because they don't have a bed to do it on. <laughs> but then if, if you break your bed, then it's your cost. So wine, breaking bed. What if you spunk all up the curtains? <laughs> Join the circus. <laughs> do you this have is to pay for the dry cleaning? I probably would, yes. Yeah. Uh, this is also from Anonymous. Or carry shout wet wipes with you wherever you go. Yes. Like me. I bet you've got some on me. Hang on. Why do you carry shout wet wipes? Oh, look. There we go. Gosh. Just because you never know. Not for spunk. That's, that's worrying. <laughs> Not for spunk. Just because they always... <laughs> or you could just get shutters and then they wipe clean. No, or just because I spill everything oh, everywhere. Oh, don't do that. Well, don't. Dear William Jordan and, of course, producer Ben, I wondered if you could help me with a dilemma. I was recently staying over at a friend's house, no apostrophe, whilst my flat was being decorated. She was working away but kindly gave me her spare key and told me to make myself at home. I did just that and enjoyed an evening of relaxation in her flat. I cooked myself dinner and watched some TV before heading for a shower before bed. Whilst I was in the bathroom, I pursued her cupboards and found some luxury shampoo and conditioner, body wash, cleanser and exfoliator, which I proceeded to use with much delight, treating myself to what felt like a glorious spa treatment evening. Once I was out of the shower, I had a thought. Should I have used her products without her knowledge? Mm. I carefully retraced my steps, placing all of the items back exactly where I found them, carefully ensuring labels were facing in the right direction as not to arouse suspicion. Is it acceptable to use products in someone else's bathroom when staying with them, and indeed should one purchase specific items that they are happy for guests to use on such occasions? I personally sort of expect my items to be used by guests, but am I in the minority? Much love, Anonymous. Yeah and no. My mum used to go mad at us for using her shampoo and conditioner. And now I get the same one in, because I think I'm an adult, I can use it. Right. Yeah, so I get the same shampoo and conditioner that she had in. Oh, really? Yeah, probably some psychological reason about that. But, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yes and no. I mean, if I was staying at someone's house and they had something a bit fancy, I'd do it. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I'd spray a bit of aftershave as well if someone's got nice aftershave. I go mad if anyone uses my aftershave, though. What, the, what a double standard. Yeah, no, but we'll do it. But I think you've done the right thing. They won't know it, as long as you haven't got an OTT. Anonymous saying that they have gone through cupboards is not good. Unless you are invited to do that, or unless yeah. they, unless your host... bathroom is, cupboards, that's no. fine. If you're going through someone's, like, bedside drawer and well, stuff. Y- yes, but th- still, there could be medication or I things disagree. that... I disagree. No. Someone has a route. No. I would say 
Well, and if you okay, so there's there's two aspects to this. There's a there's the looking, and then b there's the using. And I would say the using, particularly if they are expensive brands or they're sort of not sort of everyday stuff, then I no, I wouldn't. Um, or you go and to go, oh, I forgot my toothpaste. I didn't bring any shower gel. Do you have any I could use? As long as you ask, it's fine. I would, of course, be delighted to offer anything to my guests, but I would probably appreciate them being asked. I had a mate who was a cleaner. She mm. used to clean this really big, fancy, rich house. And every day when she finished, she used mm. to have to quick squirt their perfume. And they seen it on CTTV, called the cleaning company up and sacked her. How tight is that? A couple of sprays of Chanel or whatever it were. Probably a bit. How tight is that? Well, it's, Would yeah. You have, I, bet, I can imagine you doing that. If your cleaner gave themselves a quick, a quick spritz, you'd call the company, wouldn't you? I'd be like, fair play to you, pal. Well, I wouldn't call the company because mine's freelance. But no, I, I, but I wouldn't do that. I would, um, yeah, I would say... Do you, Could you not, or, or I just buy them a bottle. Yeah, that, there we go. That would be my pass ag. Just buy them a bottle going, seeing as you'd like it so much. See, I hate people using my aftershave, but if I had a cleaner and they were using it, mm. I'd be like, fair play to you. Okay. If. What? If. What? This is from Anonymous as well. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I'm an original G and Diva, and probably in your older listener bracket, as I am 50. This is where my dilemma starts. Until years ago, I had been with my husband for 30 years, very happily married for most of them, with two gorgeous teenage children. Sadly, my marriage ended very badly in 2021 when my husband met someone much younger and left me very suddenly. Oh, I was devastated. That's awful. After a period, my... Oh, that's a bit much. Oh, I see. After a period, my children encouraged me to try online dating, and I met a wonderful new man. We have been making the most of our new relationship in many new and varied ways, and it's fabulous. Two weeks ago, brace yourself, everyone. Two weeks ago, we decided it was time for our families to meet. His kids, my kids, and both of his parents and step-parents joined the gathering at his small flat. I was extremely nervous. Our children chatted politely with each other in the small lounge slash dining room, and his mum helped me set the table. Oh. Just as we stood in a circle sharing pleasantries, my puppy came, charging into the room with something in her mouth. No. To my horror. <laughs> no. I quickly realised it was a sex toy. No. I tried to get it off her, but she thought I wanted to... I tried to get it off her, but she thought I wanted to play no. and started a tug of war with me. No. In the middle of this, she bit on the button and it started to vibrate. <laughs> no. This made her run under the sofa with it and drop it on the wooden floor where it proceeded to make no. an absolute racket. Everyone looked horrified. I crawled on my hands and knees to recover the object, but she ran from under the sofa and was caught by my boyfriend's eight-year-old dad, who got it off her and handed it to me. <laughs> he, he, he said, without even a hint of a smile, you'll need to switch it off, I haven't got my glasses on. I was absolutely mortified. Our sons particularly looked like they wanted to die. We ate the meal in relative silence, and it hasn't been mentioned since. My boyfriend, I should add, missed the entire thing as he was in the kitchen. So here is the question. What is the appropriate etiquette for dealing with this type of mortifying situation, both at the time and subsequently, because at the moment I feel butt plug gate is looming large in our blended family dynamic? It was a butt plug. Apparently. Much love. Oh my God, this gets worse. Much love, hugs and kisses. Anonymous. Anonymous, it's probably best left not to talk about, but I can imagine your boys, your sons, will get really, really pissed one day and be like, hammered, and just say, do you remember the time the dog found my mum's butt plug? Vibrating. Vibrating. Yeah, I, I mean, that is, that is absolutely fantastic. I would say time is a great healer. <laughs> I mean, it's hysterical to us. It's, that's got to be one of the best dilemmas we've, we've had in a long, long time. It'll be funny to you in about a year. Mm, it, about ten. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the therapist will love it. Yeah, <laughs> the therapist will love it. We're buzzing for you. <laughs> <laughs> but my advice to your family is you just don't mention it. Don't mention you go to your oh, own God, therapist. I'm crazy. I've got tears and I've got tears running down. That's absolutely brilliant. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Well, I don't have a dog. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And on that note... <laughs> That's got to be one of my best ones. <laughs> Take the next week off. Yeah. I'm crying here, I'm crying. <laughs> Uh, right. And on that note, on the weekend release, we're talking about the coronation some more. <laughs> and we've also got a bit of a surprise as well. We have a surprise. We have a surprise, don't we, Ben? Yeah. Make sure you listen on Friday. I reckon it's going to be one of, if not the best weekend release we've ever done. Is Patricia Outley John? Even better. No. Julie Andrews. As always. Remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Mondays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextomyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextomyboss. Or you can write to William who promises a handwritten reply on his own letter to pay for the addresses on the website, sextofmyboss.com. Mm-hmm.